I visited the coasts of West Africa. My soul was broken. I wasn't sure of my emotions. The scars left behind by the transatlantic slave trade were too hard for my emotions to handle. All I had on me was my mobile phone. But I just had to share the story. This is the Cape Coast Castle. The Europeans built about 64 of these forts and castles along the coast of West Africa. Ghana alone is home to about 40 of these castles. However, only a few are left standing, like the Cape Coast Castle. This castle was built around 1664 by the British, which means it is roughly 357 years old. The building is believed to have been constructed with bent bricks, lime powder from oyster shells, together with oil and sand as binder, and of course, with cheap African labor. Slaves were mostly brought from all corners of the Gold Coast and sold to the British. Some slaves were brought all the way from the Upper Volta region, through the Picoro slave camp, through to the Salaga slave market, and all the way to the coastal regions to be sold to the British. It is however worth noting that this journey was embarked on by foot all the way from these upper regions whilst in chains and shackles. As I walk through the gates of the Cape Coast Castle, one thing that stood out to me the most was how the place for worshipping God was right above the dungeons where slaves were kept. My tour guard for the day was Mr. Richard Quisi Obain. As Richard walked me into the male dungeon, the full scale of atrocities that were caused here several centuries ago struck my heart. They defecated here, mm -hmm. urinated, vomited, they ate, they slept here. With their cut hair, rotten of the gate, they smelled for this. Some of them had souls of water. So you imagine the stench, the flies, the mosquitoes, the pain, the hunger here. Once again, the scale of atrocities caused in this castle is just unbelievable. As soon as today, just to keep up. This is the female dungeon. Of the female captives, they were abusing some of these women sexually. Those who resisted, those who denied them sexual advances, those women wanted to protect their little dignities left. A couple of them, about eight of them, were pushed in here, locked them up with heavy metal door, gave them food, water, just once a day. Because in the dungeons, they were fed twice, but in the cell once. To this one. Faces, jewelry, vomit, blood, you know, as women, during that time of the month, the ladies were standing better into a whole year. After seven, ten days, those who survived the cell were allowed to go back into the dungeons just to punish them here. So, next time, they were allowed themselves to be raped, also to serve as a deterrent to the other women. So, this is a cell for those who denied the British sexual advances. You can see the cell, see the hope for faces for blood. And blood. And parked like sardines to be sold in Europe, the West Indies, 
and other parts of the world. According to TGC, about 11 million people were shipped out of Africa as slaves. As I walked through the door of no return, I kept thinking of how many souls would have walked out of this door and never to return again. So many years after slavery, two people were brought back through this door of no return to break the curse of slaves not returning. Hence, we now have the door of return directly behind the door of no return. <sighs> Although the transatlantic slave trade officially ended centuries ago, it is sad and undeniably true that slavery still exists in different formats across the world. It therefore lies on you and I to come together, to live together, to laugh, and to see each other as equal in order to end slavery completely. For we may be different in complexion, but still one people.